Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today I wanted to discuss the idea of boson stars, based on the new research that came out very recently. The idea here is pretty simple, because there are so many different types of particles possible, some of these particles could be bosons, and some of these bosons could create stars, and some of these stars could actually look very similar to typical black holes that we've already discovered. And the scientists behind this paper decided to find out what would make the black hole different from a typical boson star if we were to look at them with our telescopes, and they discovered something really cool. So let's discuss this in more detail. But first, bosons? What is that? And honestly, don't feel bad if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Let me try to help you visualize all of this, just to give you a sort of a basic conceptual understanding. So I think most of us are probably familiar with the idea of atom. This is what most books, most high school books, for example, present the atoms to be. Honestly, this is actually not a very good representation, and as a matter of fact, does create a lot more conceptual misunderstanding than explains things. But this is a completely different issue that we're going to discuss some other time. Because right now, our concern is with these tiny, tiny pieces that you see forming the atom itself. There's this beautiful simulation made by the Atlas team from the Swiss CERN, the particle accelerator, that gives us this beautiful, very realistic image of what each of those little balls or spheres looks like. In other words, one of these is this whole thing right here. Inside of it, as you can see, are more components. These are quarks and gluons. Quarks are these things right here, and gluons are this right here. Now, this might not really make sense right now, but just bear with me. So, what you can see from this simulation is that the gluons are sort of holding quarks together. There are three quarks here, for example, two up quarks and one down quark will create a proton, and two down quarks, one up quark will create a neutron. But these tiny white things, these tiny white particles, are gluons holding them together. Now, most people don't really realize this, but the mass of a particle the actual idea of the mass is actually these gluons themselves. The mass of a particle is for the most part made out of these gluons, the energy of these gluons holding everything together. And so most of the mass in the universe is actually made out of the idea of particles just kind of holding together and this energy of holding them is what the mass is. Which brings me to another really important experiment from Atlas in regards to Higgs boson discovery from a few years ago. It was announced that this is the particle that creates mass in the universe, at least in the media. In reality though, this is not entirely true. It only creates some of the mass, very, very, very small part of it. Once again, we'll talk about this in some of the future videos because it's a very, very long and somewhat difficult topic to cover. But the whole point here is this. The particle that you see, the proton in this case, contains three quarks and it contains a bunch of gluons. Quarks in this case, are what we call fermions. Gluons, the white things, are the bosons. Protons, neutrons, electrons, neutrinos are all fermions, and these are the particles that are more familiar to us from, for example, high school. However, the less familiar particles, the bosons here, are the gluons, the Higgs boson, the mesons, pions, kaons, and a lot of other stuff, with the only one familiar to us being the photon. So there is a kind of a division between the subatomic particles, but to understand how this division is formed is somewhat tricky. The only thing I'm going to tell you is this, and this is really the only thing you need to know about this. Every fermion has a very certain limitation that relates to the idea of what we call Pauli's exclusion principle. The concept here is pretty simple. I can take a single particle and I can place it next to another particle, and I can even squeeze them super, super close together, and they're still going to be okay but I can never really place them into one another. They cannot occupy the same space and the same quantum state as it's known. Bosons, on the other hand, can. As a matter of fact, I can take a bunch of bosons and place them into the exactly same spot, exactly the same quantum state, and they'll be totally fine with it. In other words, so let's think of this in more earthly terms. Take a bunch of rocks. You can't really squeeze them more than your force allows you to. But you can take a bunch of flashlights and shine them at the same spot and they're all going to be fine. So it doesn't really matter how many photons you place in the same spot, they can coexist together without any problem. And it's not because they're waves, it's really because they're bosons. And we know this to be true of other bosons as well. The best example, of course, is the creation of a state known as Bose-Einstein condensate. 
And this is the state that we can generate in the lab. And it starts acting like a single thing, like a single wave that is measurable in the lab. What's really unusual about one of the elements we have on the planet, the element that you see right here known as helium-4, an isotope of helium, is that it actually can act as both fermion and boson. In other words, normally, in normal conditions, helium will act like a typical fermion. In other words, it's impossible to squeeze it into the same spot. But if you cool it down and if you raise the pressure, it suddenly transforms into something known as superfluid helium. This is a very strange state and it's essentially a boson state. And here, this fluid starts acting really weird. First of all, as you see in this picture, it starts to disregard the idea of walls. It actually starts climbing up the walls and dripping under the container. But what's even weirder is that there is absolutely no friction on the inside as we've learned from one of the recent experiments. In other words, if you were to somehow find yourself waving your hand inside of the superfluid helium, you would feel like there is nothing there, like it's absolute vacuum. And that is just mind-blowing. It's like this material is there, but there is nothing to sense it. And that's the idea of bosons. And this is a perfect example of what bosons are like. And of course, you can also squeeze it to a tiny, tiny single point and possibly create a star. And so, let's talk about this new study. In this study, the scientists made an assumption that, just like fermions, bosons must be everywhere, because we've made so many of them in the lab. And maybe these bosons existed in the beginning of the universe, and maybe some of them turned into the very large, very massive boson stars in the beginning. Now, obviously, I was really curious to find out what would a boson star look like. So, obviously, I took some artistic liberties and tried to create one in a simulation. And, well, there it is, in the middle. This would be an empty and newly born boson star. Essentially, it's kind of invisible. And here we are a little bit closer to it. So, it would still have gravitational effects. It would still possess a lot of similar effects to a black hole. It might even have accretion disks. But because it doesn't contain a singularity and it doesn't actually destroy matter, it just absorbs it, it would eventually start getting brighter and brighter as all of this matter accumulates on the inside. After possibly a few million years, the boson star is going to transform and look a little bit different. So let's see what a transformed boson star might look like. Once again, a little bit of artistic freedom, and here we go. So the shining here is formed by the material stuck inside the boson star, but in this case, this boson star is a very still, not really moving much, not spinning at all which is not realistic according to the scientists behind this paper. Today we believe that, because all matter spins in the universe, boson stars would start spinning too. But because they're minuscule in size, they would create something that looks like... No, they wouldn't create this. This is a Boston donut. Not a boson donut I was looking for. Anyway, this is a little bit better, but probably not as descriptive. They would look something like this. These would be the boson rings or boson donuts. And you can learn more about the description of these boson donuts in this paper right here. So in other words, the possibility for these unusual stars, these boson objects to exist, is now extremely high. And when you really think about it, 50 years ago nobody really believed black holes existed, nobody really knew about neutron stars. All of this stuff was exotic and sort of in the realm of the science fiction. Today we know that neutron stars and black holes are everywhere around us. And because the universe is so complex, and because there are so many different possibilities for different particles to exist, there is absolutely no reason to doubt that boson stars are real as well. We're just not entirely sure what they would look like. And so this paper kind of tries to establish that. They go through a lot of simulations and they try to understand how the black hole differ from a typical large boson star. And there are some differences but there are actually a lot more similarities. In other words, even the black holes we've already discovered could technically be boson stars. One major difference, of course, is the absence of the event horizon which is present in black holes but not in boson stars. So if event horizon is discovered, then it's definitely a black hole. If something else is discovered and has different motions around it, and most importantly, if it doesn't have this very active magnetic part, then it could be a boson star. And this paper has a lot of different visual simulations to show you what the main difference between black holes and boson stars would be, but for the most part they still kind of look very similar. 
Here I guess you can kind of see that there are some differences. This is a black hole, this is a boson star, black hole, boson star, black hole, boson star. But the similarities are still there. And so other than the size of the event horizon or the shadow of the black hole, it's somewhat difficult to tell them apart. But interestingly, when the scientists tried to analyze the famous M87 black hole, because of the size of the shadow in the black hole, they knew right away that this is definitely not a boson star. So there's definitely at least one way we can determine one from another. But in every other respect, they might still resemble black holes. The accretion disk, the very powerful radiation effects, and a lot of other interaction, especially interaction with nearby matter, will resemble what black holes do as well. So just detecting, for example, X-ray radiation is not really going to tell us much. Oh, also, light can escape a boson star. It's going to be bent on its way, but it's not going to get trapped and it's not going to disappear like it does in black holes. So there is that main difference as well. But right now, theoretically, for these stars to exist, there needs to be a very specific type of a boson that we still haven't really created in the lab. Specifically, it has to be a boson that's light enough and has enough repulsion that it can create these very massive objects. One potential candidate so far is the mysterious axion that we've been looking for for a very long time but still haven't found it. But there are lots of lots of other candidates as well. So in that sense, the existence of boson stars is much more than just a curiosity. The possibility right now is extremely high. What is going to be very difficult though is trying to prove that what we've discovered is a boson star and not just a typical black hole or a neutron star. That is going to require a completely new set of techniques and probably a lot of telescope observations that we've never done before. Nevertheless, that's not a reason for us not to keep looking. Because since we know that helium-4 exists and can become a boson, there is no reason to believe that it can do this somewhere else out there in the universe. Which of course makes all of this so much more exciting. But anyway, once we learn more about boson stars or about some other unusual stars out there, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out the papers I mentioned in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find it in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And because of Google, now I have to go and find a Boston donut somewhere. Ah, uh, not good for my diet.